Who's your commander? Good luck. Equip? Move to combat. Resolves. Thank now, you. before you attack Does me. anyone have an answer? Well played. Good game. Hello, everyone. Jumbo Commander here, and today's deck tech is Firesong and Sunspeaker. Firesong and Sunspeaker are four red-white for a 4-6 legendary creature Minotaur Cleric. Red instant and sorcery spells you control have lifelink. And when a white instant or sorcery spell causes you to gain life, Firesong and Sunspeaker deals three damage to target creature or player. Well, this is not the normal Boros Commander we're used to. We don't have to turn Firesong and Sunspeaker sideways. We can sit back and have a really cool spell slinger strategy. I wonder what combos could work with Firesong and Sunspeaker. Actually, I'm going to talk a little bit about how this mechanic works and what we can do to really abuse it. I also need to address the Boros Curse, which is ramp and card draw. We need to talk about it because Firesong and Sunspeaker might be different, but it doesn't make up for a big shortcoming of the color combination. Finally, let's talk about life gain and burn. These are the two things that are rewarded by this commander. So let's jump right in and start describing one of the main cards that people are freaking out about. And that's something simple, which is the good old Lightning Helix. Lightning Helix is red and a white for an instant, deals three damage to a target, and you gain three life. It's so simple. It's so unimpactful in commander. I never see Lightning Helix played. Why are people freaking out about using it now? Well, with your 6 CMC commander, you can do 6 damage and gain 6 life. Now I'm wondering if Lightning Helix is impactful enough. I mean, it's certainly going to feel super satisfying to cast it, but the floor is a card we don't really want to play, and the ceiling actually isn't that high either. 6 damage is fine, but I mean, does this really do that much more than any other kill spell in the format? I don't know. And you need your commander in order to pull it off. That's just a hoop I'm not willing to jump through. The reason I bring this up is not to just dampen your hype for this commander, but instead have you realize that some of this incidental life gain and incidental damage isn't going to be as impactful and strong enough for you to really enjoy and compete in this commander format. You need something bigger and we need to understand Firesong and Sunspeaker's ability. The next card will help us understand it, and that's Renewed Faith. Two and a white for an instant, you gain six life. If you cast Renewed Faith and you have your commander out, it will trigger dealing three damage to another target. Great! But hang on, it's the other part of Renewed Faith that is so good, and the other part that we need to talk about, and that's the cycling ability. And ability is the right word. Cycling is an activated ability. And when you cycle Renewed Faith, there is a trigger that causes you to gain two life. Now this is the trigger that's causing you to gain two life, not the instant. And so Firesong and Sunspeaker would not trigger, and it would not deal its three damage. Now I know that's very convoluted, but it's important to understand that gaining life through triggers is not the same thing as gaining life because of an instant or sorcery. And so some combos turn out not to be able to work. Which is very sad, because some people did a lot of work and came up with really cool cards and they just don't work. Spiritual Eyes and Samite Ministration. These looked so promising and so good, but they don't work. And it again has to deal with those triggers. Let's look at Spiritual Eyes. Two and a white for an instant until end of turn, whenever target creature deals damage, you gain that much life, draw a card. It's exactly what we want. And it can create a loop with Sunspeaker, oh wait, no. There's that whenever word. Whenever target creature deals damage. That sets up a delayed trigger. So Firesong and Sunspeaker will not recognize a trigger as an instant or sorcery gaining life. So it will not do its thing. It's very sad, I know. There is one card that can combo with Firesong and Sunspeaker, and that's Chant of Vitugazi. Six white white for a convoking instant, and it says prevent all damage that would be dealt by creatures this turn. You gain one life for each damage prevented this way. Notice there's no when, whenever, anything like that. And so this instant does work. So what happens exactly? Okay. You play this chant and you prevent some damage, and magically you gain a life. 
And then Fire Song and Sunspeaker says, deal three damage. And then Chant of Vizugazi says, no, you can't deal damage. You're going to gain life instead. And Fire Song and Sunspeaker come in and says, oh, no, no, we need to deal damage whenever we gain life. And they just keep going. And they never stop because neither one of them is a May ability. And so you gain infinite life until you draw the game out. <sighs> there are ways to interrupt this. You could sacrifice Fire Song and Sunspeaker. You could do a lot of things. You could end the turn. You could even nuke people in the face with a Aether Flux Reservoir in response. But this is a very delicate and expensive and complicated combo, especially compared to what could have been the elegance of these other cards that apparently just don't work. So now we have a better idea of Fire Song and Sunspeaker. We know that we can't combo as easily as we thought. Now we might understand how the triggers work and how spells work, and we also understand that a lot of the cards that deal incidental damage or gain us a little bit of life, well, they're not that good, they're not that impactful, and so we might need to go a little bit bigger. But first, let's talk about the Curse of Boros. Let's talk about card draw and ramp. I'll start off with an incredibly overpowered card, and that's Land Tax. You can draw up to three basics every single turn, and you're gonna keep drawing it because guess what? Boros sucks at ramping, so you'll always trigger land tax. And then what are you gonna do with all of these extra lands? Well, you're gonna make your land drops, but you can also put them back on top with Scroll Rack. You can chuck them with Faithless Looting and Cathartic Reunion. There's a lot of things to do with extra lands. This deck is a little bit more Spell Slinger, so I'm gonna lean a little bit heavier on the Faithless Looting and the Cathartic Reunion. There's another thing that Red does really well, and that's Wheel of Fortune effects. Of course, there's just Wheel of Fortune. It's great, it's three mana, discard your hand, and draw seven new cards. That's amazing. The problem is, is Wheel of Fortune is a bajillion dollars, and it's hard to put a, such an expensive card in a deck that is not really close to competitive. It's more for fun. If you have the Wheel of Fortune, put it in here, but if you don't, you're gonna have to find ways around it. Chandra Flamecaller is a great way around it. It's more expensive, but this zero ability, you discard all the cards in your hand, then draw that many cards plus one. I really am liking Chandra. The problem is, is that Chandra is not an instant or sorcery. It doesn't play into our instant sorcery strategy. And so I'm a little bit underwhelmed that I can't play traditional wheels. But let's go on to Red's new way of drawing cards, and that's this Impulse Draw. Outpost Siege and Chandra Torture Defiance can exile the top cards of our library and let us play it. That is if we're ready to play it. This deck might not want to play cards in the sequence that just happens to be off the top of our library. A lot of our cards might interact with our commander really well, and we might not want to play them at that time. A lot of our cards might require a lot of mana that we don't need to sink in at that time. And so Impulse Draw doesn't work that well either. I think there is one Impulse Draw that could be really good, and that's Commune with Lava. I plan on generating a lot of mana. I think that this deck's gonna be really mana hungry. And so the ability to commune with Lava and then get to be able to play my choice of spells the next turn could be really strong. Next up, we have a non-bow, and that's the Immortal Sun and Karn Scion of Urza. The Immortal Sun lets us draw a card every turn. It reduces the casting cost of our spells. I like the ability to reduce the casting cost. I think Ruby Medallion's gonna fit great in this deck. But Karn, Karn's a colorless way to draw cards. We're gonna be putting Karn in a ton of decks from now on if the price gets reasonable. But now we have this non-bow that I actually don't think is a non-bow. We'll deal with it. It's fine. If we turn off our own Karn, so what? We can play around it. We're probably going to disrupt other people way more than we're going to disrupt ourselves. Just play them both and not worry about it. And finally, we have this impulse card draw out of red. Well, we also have this impulse mana creation out of red. Along with Treasonous Ogre, Neheb the Eternal, Mana Geyser. These are going to be all stars in this deck. In fact, Neheb the Eternal might be so good, you might be wondering why Neheb isn't the commander. I have wondered that sometimes, but we're going to gain tons of life. Treasonous Ogre is going to give us so much mana, and Mana Geyser is an all-star no matter what deck you play it in. It gets so much mana. And so these sort of effects are going to be really, really powerful. So now I'm feeling a little bit 
better about our mana production. We have some explosive cards. What are we going to spend all of this mana on? Well, we're probably going to be spending it on damage, but before we get there, let's talk a little bit about life gain. Life gain is a tricky thing in Commander because a lot of times it does nothing. We have huge amounts of life as a resource in our game, but sometimes when we have a strategy built around it, it's crazy. And this is going to be one of those decks. But we're going to gain life because of our Commander and dealing damage, not from these life gain spells, because they mostly suck. With the exception of a few, the first one I don't want to talk about is Righteous Confluence. All the confluences are great. Righteous Confluence is fine. Put some knights on the battlefield. Yeah, okay, we might need a knight here and there. But I really like Exile Target Enchantment. Have you played against a Theros God, a Perforos? Yeah, exile that. Get out of here. And then also, gain five life. But you could gain five life three different times. Gain five life, gain five life, gain five life. That means that Firesong and Sunspeaker will trigger three times, gain 15 life, deal 9 damage. That's pretty solid. And, of course, exiling an enchantment. That's why it's really here. Let's move on. You know, if we really want to kill something, we could also run just a simple card like Invoke the Divine. It destroys target artifact and enchantment. And I know the rate isn't very good, 2 and a white for this ability, but it has gain 4 life tacked on and... I guess people are really focusing on the upside of having your commander out and dealing 3 damage somewhere. Part of me just wants to play wear and tear. Destroy what you want for cheaper, and if you need to, you get two things instead of one. And you just need that one card, wear and tear, and not invoke the divine and your commander on the battlefield. Next up we have some draw, survival cash. You gain two life, then if you have more life than an opponent, draw a card, and this can rebound. So, for 3 mana, we can gain 4 life and draw 2 cards. That's a pretty mediocre divination. I don't think I want to play divination in my deck. Hmm. Maybe this isn't that good. What happens if I just, you know, deal 6 damage into there? That's fine, but I'm wondering if survival cash is really what we're looking for. What I think I'm looking for is Well of Lost Dreams. Whenever I gain life. I can pay X where X is less than or equal to the amount of life you gained, and draw X cards. Ooh hoo hoo! See now, Well of Lost Dreams can be a huge influx of cards. It's not a very good rate to begin with, but pretty soon this could start just really taking over a game. I'm kind of excited about Well of Lost Dreams. And as long as I'm going to be gaining tons of life, how about Felidar Sovereign, Test of Endurance to end the game? But my preferred way to end the game has to be Aetherflux Reservoir. I just want a 50 people to the face. And speaking of dealing tons of damage to people's faces, let's talk about Burn. Because that's at the core of this deck. I gain some life, I throw a bolt at someone. No, no, no. It's Fire Song and Sunspeaker's ability to give my burn spells lifelink that I'm excited about. Let's talk about some cards. Jaya's Immolating Inferno. Deal X damage to each of up to three targets. Wait a second. Five Kamai Commander on the battlefield. I can pump 10 mana into this and do 24 damage and gain 24 life? Yes, yes I can. Follow the Titans. If I can cast this for its surge cost and suddenly I'm gaining double the life that I'm dealing damage, I can swing this straight at people's faces. How about other cards? Acidic Soil deals one damage to each player for each land he or she controls. What? I played this in the late game, people have 10-15 lands out. In a multiplayer game, I'm gaining so much life and dealing tons of damage. How about Price of Progress? This is not a format of basic lands. So Price of Progress does tons of damage to everyone, and suddenly I'm in the triple digits of life. <sighs> Fiery Confluence is the other confluence in this deck, and again, the flexibility is insane. Dealing one damage to each creature, what if there's a lot of creatures on the battlefield? I will gain a lot of life. Two damage to each opponent, destroy target artifact, so flexible, so strong. Speaking of this ability to do damage to all the creatures, if there are a lot of creatures on the battlefield, I could play a card like Rolling Earthquake. 
Rolling Earthquake deals X damage to each creature without horsemanship in each player. That's basically every creature. And so suddenly, with my commander out, I can pump a huge amount of mana into Rolling Earthquake, and then suddenly wipe the board of all the creatures, and Rolling Earthquake has lifelink, giving me so much life. Rolling Earthquake is the best, because it hits everything, I mean, besides horsemanship, but it hits mostly everything. Other cards, subtraining Tremors, it could blow up your artifacts, it's pretty good too. Bonfire the Damned is pretty strong, but it only hits one player. Molten Disaster is great because it has that kicker to give it split second, but it doesn't hit things with flying. And Sudden Demise can pick out a specific opponent, but uh, what happens if you want to clear the whole board, or if an opponent has multiple colored creatures. You know, there's a lot of ways to deal with creatures too. Chain Reaction is a great red damage wipe. Blasphemous Act, 13 damage. Star of Extinction, 20 damage. Just imagine, there's like, I don't know, five creatures on the battlefield. Star of Extinction deals 20 to each one of them. That's a hundred lifelinking damage that you've just, I can't believe it. It's crazy. The amount of life you can gain in this is so stupid that suddenly people are just gonna have a hard time killing you. And of course, you could really take control of the game. Let's look at cards like Wildfire, Burning of Zinyi. Each player sacrifices four lands. Well, that's horrifying, but it deals four damage to each creature. Does a lot of damage and doesn't kill your own commander and you gain a ton of life. It sets everyone back. Burning of Zinyi is a little bit weaker because you have to choose target opponent. It's not every single opponent, but still really, really just damaging. And one thing that's good about them is its mana cost. They're only six mana to do that. Some of these other rolling earthquake effects, we're really going to want to pump a lot of mana into them. I also like the ability to recycle these effects. Mizix's Mastery could have you casting every instant or sorcery from your graveyard. It's great to be able to cast our spells twice. Let's cast them twice even more. Pyromancer's Goggles and Primal Amulet will let us double up our spells. And this is why I favored the spell-heavy sort of draw package, the Cathartic Reunions and that Faithless Looting over other effects, because the ability to double them up and get them back from our graveyard is going to be awesome. And as long as we're doubling up, we could double up the damage. Dictated the Twin Gods and Furnace of Wrath. So we can see the core of this strategy. There's a lot of cards here that can control creature strategies, can double up and give ourselves huge over-the-top plays, and with our commander, we can gain tons of life, putting us out of reach of a lot of different decks. This could be a very interesting controlling strategy, and we could just wipe other people out of the game with rolling earthquakes and molten disasters. Sounds super fun. You know, we might need a small creature package to help supplement this spell slinger strategy. We do have to be a little bit careful because of all the board wipes and damage we have. We're gonna want to slam Blasphemous Act to kill the board and gain us a bajillion life. And so when we do that, we might as well have a card like Spite Nair, Stuffy Doll, and Boros Reckoner on the battlefield. These allow us to double up the damage against our opponents when we cast those huge damage-based board wipes. You know, if we have a lot of smaller spells, we could use a card like Gutter Snipe in order to gain incremental advantage as we cast a lot of spells. I think it just has to do a little bit with your strategy, especially if you're going maybe a little bit more in the Spell Slinger area. Similar to Gutter Snipe, I think cards like Monastery Mentor, Young Pyromancer, and Blaze Commando could be pretty strong if you're casting a lot of little spells. Hmm, these tokens are cute, but I think I prefer my tokens to have a little bit more oomph to them. Crested Sunmare can give me 5-5 five, five indestructible horses. Okay, maybe it's not the best strategy, but come on. You know you want to play with Crested Sunmare. Assemble the Legion is great because we can wipe away our board and then rebuild just as quickly. Balefire Liege is an anthem for this token strategy, but also you just kind of have to include them because look at this other text. Whenever you cast a red spell, it deals 3 damage to target player, and whenever you cast a white spell, you gain 3 life. So it kind of doubles up on this effect as kind of a weaker version of your commander. It fits pretty well. 
it might fit in really well if you find yourself in a strategy where you're casting a lot of little spells rather than building up to one of those big haymaker spells. But no matter what, you're going to have a very small creature strategy, and so you're going to want to protect your creatures, and specifically your commander, because your commander's going to give you a ton of life. And so cards like Boros Charm, Darksteel Plate, Teferi's Protection, Shielded by Faith, Lightning Greaves, all of them are going to be invaluable because you need your commander out, then you need one of these big board wipes to just put you in the triple digits of life. It's super powerful. And honestly, as long as you're gaining the life that one time, you can let your commander die. It's cool. Trust me, it can be very difficult to overcome that much life gain, and you're going to be able to get it in this deck. There's another strategy I feel obliged to introduce to you. I don't necessarily like this strategy that much, but you should look at it. Mark of Asylum, Light of Sanction, Runetail Kitsune Ascendant, and all of these will essentially prevent the damage to your creatures that well, you deal to them. That means that you can cast a huge rolling earthquake and you won't hurt any of your own creatures, only your opponents. I think that this is too cute. I think that what you really want to do is have your commander out and cast your big spell. And if you're waiting for a third piece of this combo, yeah, it's, it's not going to be good enough. And so you just suck it up and you kill some of your own creatures and really you just gain that huge amounts of life as you wipe the board, bring everyone's life total down, and then all you need is a little bit more to finish out the game. And that would be my take on it. I want to revisit one more thing, and that's the Immortal Sun and Outpost Siege. I think I'm going to include these even though I might have been a little bit critical of them. And I think the reason why I like the Immortal Sun is because it also gives my creatures plus one plus one. So if I am going to throw in and assemble the Legion or any of these go wide spell slinger strategies, the Immortal Sun reduces the mana cost, gives me that card I need, and pumps my creatures. And Outpost Siege does something really similar. People always use this impulse draw. I didn't even mention the other mode, and that's dragons. Whenever a creature you control leaves the battlefield, Outpost Siege deals one damage to target creature or player. Sometimes you could have a critical mass large enough that you just play Outpost Siege on dragons and suddenly your opponents can't kill your creatures and they can't just keep taking damage from them. An Outpost Siege on dragons and assemble the Legion is something that needs to be solved or else it will take over the game. So what did I learn about Firesong and Sunspeaker? Well, I learned that I'm not really interested in gaining 3 life and dealing 3 damage. I am interested in huge plays that wipe the board. I'm interested in Star of Extinction gaining me 200 life maybe? I don't know how much life I'm going to gain. I'm interested in Aetherflux Reservoir zapping people in the face using my life as a resource. I'm interested in making huge plays and draining my life with Treasonous Ogre to wipe out the board. I'm really excited about this deck. Thank you so much for sticking around. I'm actually going to give away a Fire Song and Sunspeaker, so make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment below. I'll do a random picking in a couple weeks, and then I'll send you your own copy of Fire Song and Sunspeaker. You know, I want to thank my patrons, especially the patrons that helped out with this giveaway. You're really awesome. I'm also going to be giving away an entire Fire Song and Sunspeaker deck to a patron. So if you want to look me up at Patreon and be a part of our community, that'd be really great too. On my way out, I just want to mention the controversy that surrounded Fire Song and Sunspeaker. This legendary creature cannot be found in booster packs. The original way to get it was through a buy a box promo at your local game store. And so this caused a lot of hubbub. People were upset about this. They felt that their access to the cards was being gated, that they weren't able to get the cards that they really wanted, and they were excited about this commander. I was actually excited about this commander too, so I went out to my local game store and I bought a box and got this promo. Wait a second. That's kind of exactly the point Wizards was trying to do. And now that I think about it, it was kind of a nice thing. I like my local game store, but I don't buy a lot of cards at it, and now I was able to buy something significant from them, and I can help support them and get something cool that you can't get just anywhere. Actually, the whole process made me a little bit sad, because I think it's going to make Wizards gun-shy to be able to try giving local game stores other cool things. I think that Wizards should be commended. Thank you, Wizards, for thinking of the LGSs, 
giving them something cool, and trying something. Barriers to entering our format and getting commanders is not necessarily very good, but this seems like it might be one of those barriers that could be exciting, and could be fun, and a thing to trade for or buy on the secondary market, and I don't think it is something that's going to be a huge problem that's going to bury our format. And I also don't ascribe to this slippery slope mentality that, oh well, if you let it slide with Firesong and Sunspeaker, then it'll be bad in the future. It'll only be bad if they screw it up. Not saying that Wizards is infallible, but give them a chance and thank you so much for taking a chance right now. I know local game store owners really did enjoy it and hopefully they're giving you the feedback. Actually, the feedback that you're probably looking at are the sales of Dominaria, maybe even these pre-sales, and hopefully they're really good. I participated in it, and so hopefully that will drive your decisions in the future. I don't know. Thanks for listening to me, and I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll talk to you really soon. Bye-bye.